Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Will. Hello there. Good morning. How are you all today? How many of you are in the energy business? You should all raise your hands. I'll bet all of you directly or indirectly are in the energy business. How many of you have energy as a significant cost of operations for your business? Yeah, I'll bet you do. All right, we're going to talk about the disruption of energy because energy, which has been a fairly static industry for decades, is now an exponential industry with rapid, rapid changes in technology. So you know who I am. I've got a tech background. I've spent a long time at uh, this large company. I've run a tech start startup. I'm the author of five books, actually best known for science fiction novels, if you believe that, but it's a very exponential area as well. And a few years ago, I wrote this book about the challenges of natural resources and environment, and can we innovate fast enough to overcome them? And what I found in doing the research for this book, as somebody who loves technology, is that the technology progress in the energy space is incredibly rapid and far faster than most people take for granted, and that if we play out those trends and take the math seriously, it has staggering consequences. I'm also a clean tech investor, so I come at this from a perspective like your last speaker, looking at where are there good deals, where are there opportunities to disrupt markets and also build large new markets and large new companies, uh, and you'll see that inform this. So we're going to talk about a few things today. We're going to talk about wind technology, we're going to talk about solar technology, which is incredibly exciting. We're going to talk about batteries, which are maybe even more exciting than solar. We're going to talk about what happens to oil because that's a big deal for markets in general. And finally, we're going to talk about how to take action in this sector. OK, so wind power. Wind power uh, might look like a stagnant uh, 19th century technology, but it's actually one that has changed tremendously. Over the last dozen years, the amount of wind power we have deployed grew by 1,000% by 10x. That's not normal in the energy field. And that happened for a number of reasons. Policy pushing it was a big one, but that policy would not have been effective if it were not for an exponential decline in the cost of wind power. Whole power electricity prices in the US are around 7 cents, let's say. In the 1980s, which is the beginning of this graph, wind power cost nearly 10 times that much per kilowatt hour. Now, last year, the average price of a new wind power long-term contract in the U.S. was actually 2.3 cents per kilowatt hour, and the cheapest were below 2 cents. That is a staggering drop in the price of wind energy, and it's been driven by a huge amount of innovation in the sector. A basic thing is that we have learned to make these wind turbines bigger. Why does that matter? Well, higher up, the wind blows more steadily and it blows faster. So that gives you an advantage. And secondly, the amount of power you get from a wind turbine is equal to the area the blade sweeps through. So if you can double the blade length, you can quadruple the amount of power you're capturing. You can also capture lower speed winds. So as we're learning more and more about manufacturing techniques, about new materials, we're able to tap into these. And you can see how the price of wind power in orange has plunged here as the scale of these turbines has grown. And as I said, this leads not just to Fast, more power at a lower cost, it leads to steadier power. Today, the wind fleet operates at a 30% capacity factor. That's the line on the left here. That means that a wind turbine produces about 30% of the max that it's actually rated for. But as we get towards taller and taller turbines, the Department of Energy expects that within a few years, we'll be able to get 60% uptime of these wind turbines. And now it no longer looks like an intermittent a platform for energy, but more like a steady one. And I will say that one of our sponsors here, GE, is one of the leaders worldwide in the development of these new wind turbines and innovating in new ways like the GE space frame to build them taller while transport them. You've heard a lot about big data, about machine learning, and so on. Well, that is also vital here. Because these individual turbines are intermittent, what we found is that in cases like Colorado, with the Excel utility there, using sensors on the wind turbines, collecting that data and putting it into algorithms to do predictions of which turbine was going to spin at which speed a few minutes from now, a few hours from now, and a day from now, allowed Excel to triple the amount of wind power they could put on their grid. And that saved them billions of dollars because this was the cheapest power they could buy in their state. Now, I told you that higher up, 
the wind blows more steadily. So Mark Andreessen says software is eating the world. This is an example of that. This is a, a prototype. It's not uh, in production yet, but this is a blimp from Altios that has inside of it a small wind turbine. But what it actually is, it's a drone. It flies under computer power, and it can hover about 500 meters above the ground, taller, three times taller than the tallest wind turbines, and tap into those high-speed winds, and then drop down in the case where uh, the wind is too high for it to be safe. Or this is another drone. This is a comp company called Makani Power in the Bay Area. This thing tilts back, takes off under computer control, flies up to as high as a kilometer up, taps into those high-speed, steady winds. You could never pay the capital cost for a kilometer-tall tower, but you can pay the software cost to self-steer this drone, and then it acts as a giant wind turbine in the sky. This company, acquired by Google two years ago, who wants to bring it to production. Now, there's a whole lot more I could say about wind power, but what I will say is that it's going to drop in cost, it's going to keep dropping in cost, but it actually pales in comparison to the incredible pace of innovation in solar.